Good morning, and welcome to Walk in the Spirit, a series of lessons from the book of Galatians. The title of this message is, Who is Your Enemy? Galatians chapter 4, verses 12 through 16 is where we'll be going to for this lesson. So while you're turning there, I will go through the review. First off, we have the Apostle Paul wrote this book to promote walking in the Holy Spirit and living a life trusting only in God for salvation. Christ paid our sin debt so that we might be saved, demanding nothing from us to earn or secure our salvation. However, God desires us to glorify Him in all we do. We ought to know the truth of God's Word and stay firm in it. God should receive glory for what He has done in your life. Watch out for fake Christians so that you can continue in great effectiveness for the Lord. Know the truth of God's word so that you can direct people to him. We have a new nature in Christ. Therefore, we should be unified with our Christian brethren that believe the same gospel so that the lost might be saved. Do not be bewitched from the service to Christ by the things and teachings of the world. We are as we as are saved are blessed by Abraham in Christ as we look to Jesus. Look to God's promise of salvation, not the works of the flesh. Jesus is our mediator between God and us. We as our Christians are united in Christ. Act like it. We were once in bondage to sin. But Christ set us free and made us heirs of salvation. Strive with them who claim to be saved, but do not act like it, so that through God's word, their state of unbelief or salvation may be revealed. So, now you should be uh, turned to Galatians chapter number 4, verses 12 through 16. We will read it. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, For I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation which was in in my flesh ye despised not nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell the truth? This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. And I thank you that we're able to be here today. And I pray that you'd bless this time. May it be for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So there are three points in this message. Paul's focus on God, Paul's devotion to God, and enemies of God. Paul's focus on God comes from verse number 12. The Bible says, Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. So you have, be as I am, for I am as ye. So in today's English, it doesn't necessarily make sense, this phrase. Because it would essentially say that you are the same. But in this English, this older English, uh, the Elizabethan English, it doesn't mean that. And in context, you see, it doesn't mean that. So Paul, he says, Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. So you have a semicolon there, and that's important to note, but the Greek doesn't have that. And it was added by the translators. But you see from Paul's history a way that makes this make a whole bunch of sense. So, Paul was saved from the teachings that good works 
and following the law saves. He was the Pharisee of Pharisees. And he was saved from that. God saved him. And Paul, I believe here, he's using that as an object lesson, using his testimony to say, I was saved from this. You are like this. So be as I am now, saved from that. Looking only to Jesus, looking only to what God has laid out for salvation, and that is through Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. And praise the Lord that God gave us that that we did not deserve. We did not deserve salvation. And Paul here, I believe his testimony is speaking loudly that he was saved from that, and he wants them to be saved from that. Now, some of them, they might have been truly saved. But if you look in the previous verses, Paul, he points out he's not entirely sure. And that is sad. There is also another thing it could be. It could be talking about being focused on the Lord because of the latter statement that Paul makes, ye have not injured me at all. Now, you might wonder, how do I get focused on the Lord from that? So, you have heard the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. In most cases, that's true. But in this case, speaking against Paul, those Galatians were doing that, but it did not hurt Paul. He was so focused on pleasing God that being vilified by friend and foe for preaching the truth of God's word did not hurt him. It just rolled off his shoulder. And he was focused on the Lord. You and me, we need to be focused on the Lord. We need to be focused on the Word of God and what the Bible says. We need to be focused on what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. And we need to listen and follow Him. And we will be more Christ-like if we do so. And that focus on God, that the first part of that verse it could be Paul saying to them, focus on God. Focus on what Jesus did for you in salvation. Don't focus on the law, because the law can't save. And you see Paul reiterating that point, that the law cannot save. Baptism can't save. Nothing but Jesus alone saves. And... The next thing that you see is Paul's devotion to God. The Bible says in verse 13, You know how, through the infirmity of the flesh, I preached the gospel unto you at the first. So, Paul, he preached the gospel through his infirmity. And, as you'll see uh, in the second part of this verse, because... Uh, this is verses 13 and 14. In verse 14, you see that it was most likely Paul's eyesight that was affected. So, Paul, he preached through that. And there are people nowadays that they have aches and pains. They won't preach through it. They will uh, step away from the ministry. And in some cases, I get that when you are no longer able to function, then, yeah, I get that. But there is a point at which you can't do anything to continue preaching in your own strength, and you have to look to the Lord to give you strength. And Paul here, he was doing that. He was preaching through his infirmity. He wasn't trusting in his own flesh, because he knew his own flesh was weak. He knew his own flesh had been corrupted, or rather, it had been messed up by the afflictions that he had undergone, undergone for the cause of Christ. Paul preached through that by the power 
of God. And the Holy Spirit worked in him. And what did you see? You saw people get saved. Or at least they made professions of faith. And honestly, I believe that uh, some of them would have truly gotten saved. But Paul questions that. Whether they made a profession, the Galatians made a profession, or if they truly meant it and were truly saved. And you see here that Paul has a devotion to God because he preached through his infirmity. He let God's word work. He let the Holy Spirit work through him, even though he might not have necessarily felt like it because of the infirmities of his flesh. He preached through it. And, you know, if you're someone who preaches the Word of God and you can't preach anymore, you know what you can do? You can pray for those who are preaching the Word of God. Because there is power in prayer. And when you pray, you see God work. And it's amazing how God works when Christians are sold out for him, and even if they don't have the strength to go out and witness, they pray for those doing that. And the Lord greatly works. Now, in verse 14, the Bible says, In my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye have despised, ye despised not, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Now, Paul here, he's saying that they welcomed him. They received him well, in spite of his injuries. The Galatians, when he first visited them, they accepted him and received Paul as being from God, in spite of the physical signs of Paul's trial. And Paul, he went through a lot for the cause of Christ. He went through a lot of afflictions for the cause of Christ. And Christian, we are in the last days before the tribulation comes. And it is bad out there. But we have power from God to witness. And we ought to witness. And what Paul went through, we are very close in America, to having that sort of affliction for the cause of Christ. Having to have that. And you know, that actually, if you remain true to Christ, and you still claim to be a Christian, when it will most likely cause you to be uh, killed, that shows faith in the Lord. And it shows that you are truly saved. Or you uh, have enough faith in uh, man to try and act like you're saved and do all that. But uh, in most cases, it means that it sh it's a sign that you're truly saved if you're staying true in the times of great tribulation. Because it shows that Christ means something in your life. And Christ meant something in the life of Paul. Paul preached through his infirmities because he was focused on God and he had a great devotion for God. And the word that is translated temptation, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce the Greek word, but it also translates as proof or adversity or discipline. So you see that Paul's injury... It was physically seen. It was proof that he had suffered for the cause of Christ. And uh, it's actually in verse 15 where it talks about uh, his eyesight. And in verses 15 and 16, you see the enemies of God. And that you don't want to be an enemy of God. It's not good. And if you're unsaved, you are an enemy of God. And 
Your final destination when you die is hell unless you get saved. And I hope and I pray that you would be saved before you die. Be saved today. In verse 15, the Bible says, Where is then the blessedness ye spake of? For I here I bear rec- I bear you record that if it had been possible, ye would have plucked out your own eyes and given them to me. So they accepted Paul in the previous verse, in verse 14. Now, Paul asks, where's that blessedness? Their love and compassion turn to malice and anger. And it wasn't necessarily because of Paul. It was because of their view of God. And they would have once done great things for him. They would have plucked out their own eyes to give to Paul. Why would they do that? Why would it not have said that they would have cut off their hands to give to Paul or uh, their nose or something like that? I would say that it is because Paul might have had issues with his eyesight. It could have been a birth defect or something like that, or it could have been age. Or, and this is most likely, because of the injuries that he took for Christ. And when you're being whipped, as Paul was whipped, that uh, whip spins around, it could easily catch you in the eye and make you go blind in one eye or have diminished eyesight or something like that. And so that is very likely that Paul, his infirmity was his eyesight. But he would have had scars and stuff that would have shown that he was serving God and he was paying for it because he loved God more than anything. And when you are getting beaten and you're getting stones thrown at you, if you are not focused on God and if you're not devoted to God, you will struggle greatly in that. And you might turn away from God. And if you're truly saved, then... God will bring you back to him one day. Or he might take you home to be with him. We don't know what God has planned. But if you are truly saved and you're focused on God and you're devoted to him, you can get through any trial by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the power of the Word of God. The Word of God is so helpful when going through a trial. And Paul, he went through many trials. He trusted in God. You also ought to trust in God when you're going through a trial. And sadly, the Galatians, their trust in God was diminished. They didn't have that focus and devotion for God as they ought. They were focusing more on the law and salvation by it. Their love for Paul changed as the devil turned their hearts away from God by adding to salvation the works of the law. And that is so sad. Their hearts once set for God, and some of them might have been truly saved, some of them might have been imposters. But their hearts were set toward God, and the devil came in and sprinkled seeds out. Did God really say? And he gives them that the law, you must follow the law to be truly saved. You must be circumcised to be saved. And that's not true. But the Galatians fell for it. They fell for that deception. And their view during that time, when they were deceived, their outlook on Paul and other Christians probably would have been diminished because their hearts weren't right with God. And Paul points out, and he pointedly asks them if he has become their enemy because he uh, preaches the truth of God's word. 
And you see that in verse 16. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And that is so sad. Paul, he pointedly asked them that. And some of them, they would have said, yeah. And that is so sad. Because their hearts were once set towards God. And they were deceived. Now, some of them might be truly Christian. Some of them might not have been. If they were not truly saved, then God is their enemy because they were unrepentant sinners and they're on their way. They're, they went to hell. And that's so sad. The Bible says in James 4, verse 4, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. The unsaved are the enemy of God because they love the world more than God. And the Galatians, if they were not truly saved, they loved the world more than God and they were the enemy of God. If they were truly saved, though, then they were weak Christians at best and were against Paul because of their distrust, dislike, or their views of God. They didn't trust God. They uh, didn't have that faith in God as they ought to because they didn't look at him as being fully able to provide for their salvation. He was, though. Jesus was fully able to pay our sin debt. We do not have to look to the law to save us in addition to Christ. Christ alone saves us. And praise the Lord for that. I didn't deserve salvation. You don't deserve salvation. But we can't do anything to earn our salvation. We must only look to Jesus for salvation. And I've accepted Jesus' salvation. And I hope that if you haven't, that you would do that. Now, we that are saved, we are not the enemies of God. Because we have Jesus taking God's wrath for our sins upon himself. And God is love. But he hates sin. Now, God is not a God of hate, though he hates sin. The Bible says God is love. The Bible never says God is hate. And God doesn't want anyone to perish. So he gave Jesus to us as our payment for our sin debt. So that God, his wrath towards us for our sin, Jesus paid it. He took that wrath upon himself. And the Galatians, if they were saved, they did not trust fully in this because they were looking to the law in addition to Jesus when they should have been looking to Jesus alone to save them. So if you're not saved, you are an enemy of God. Look to Jesus for salvation and be saved. Christian, are you focused on God? Are you fully devoted to Him? If not, confess that to God. No matter what you've done, no matter what struggles you face, God can use you as He used Paul. Paul, he killed Christians. He had many infirmities. And... It says, Paul preached through them. He preached through his infirmity. God can use you like that. He can. God's all-powerful. He can help you and he can help me to go out and reach this lost and dying world for him so that the lost might be saved before it's everlasting too late. God can help us to accomplish that. 
We just have to have faith in Him. We just gotta be focused on God. We just have to be devoted to Him and look to Him for help in this. And God can greatly work as He worked through Paul. Paul persevered with Christ through trials and tribulations so that God might be glorified by lost sinners being saved. And God can do that in us as well. Help us through the trials and tribulations so that he is glorified by lost people being saved and seeing saved people edified so that more lost people are saved. God can do that. And you want to know a key to how Paul was able to persevere through all that? It's simple. He walked in the Spirit. And he was walking in the Spirit. Oh, Christian, do the same. Walk in the Spirit.